Name another manufacturer that allows you to remove the battery. The Fairphone 4 offers more than just specs, so make sure to sit back and enjoy my review. It begins with the packaging and what comes in the box, or what maybe doesn't come in the box. And like many other manufacturers, this has changed recently with recycled materials and doesn't include any unwanted accessories, which is really important because as like me, they most probably just build up in your drawer and you never use them. You will get your Fairphone 4 quick start guide, warranty information, and that that's it, both the plug and charging cable are sold separately. However, on the packaging, it mentions what they offer as a company that cares about their people and the environment. So it's fair and recycled materials for the planet, making sure the materials used doesn't get mined out of the ground all the time. We can actually recycle old devices, old components to make a newer, smarter device. Good working conditions for the miners and the workers in their factories, allowing people to thrive and enjoy what they do. And then they have electronic waste neutral so try to be a neutral company with wastage when it comes to electronic components from your smartphone this is really good and on their website it really explains what they do and how they help the environment and i think it's really good sometimes to shout about this because companies are now trying to be more sustainable and care about the environment and the workforce so that may be the workforce that's in the factories or even those that are mining the raw materials that we need to create our smartphones so you're watching this video for my review so let's begin with the design first of all can we get a like for the beautiful green option that i have you can also choose to get it in grey and if you want to stand out from the crowd you can opt for their exclusive speckled design which is only available on their website the link will be in the video description so made from a smooth aluminium body and soft to the touch back cover is made from recycled materials and is removable removing the back cover exposes the components that can be repaired for you or you can replace the components yourself yes again you heard that right you can replace the components yourself there will be a link in the description description to the components that you can buy to either replace yourself or you can find a suitable repair option available. A removable battery. Well, in 2023, didn't think that would be possible. With a capacity of 3,905 millionth hour and charging speeds of up to 20 watts via USB-C cable and plug, it gains up to a 50% charge in just 30 minutes. Well, in my test, it was 32 minutes. Close enough, I think you agree. The battery will last you most of the day and especially for myself when traveling and capturing content around London using social media apps to share images and turn-by-turn -turn navigation, I found the battery lasted me most of the day. So I managed to get everything done before finding my hotel and resting my feet after walking about 12 miles. So offering 5G connectivity thanks to the Vodafone network is great to have when you get lost in London. Also it can fall back to the 4G option when needed. One issue I noticed went out and it was bright. The display brightness level could be improved. It seemed dark and hard to use in certain lighting situations. As I'm visually impaired, this may not help the situation either. With this device though, you do get a large 6.3 inch IPS LCD display that has a resolution of 1080 by 2340 with a 409 pixel per inch density. So when using, content looks clear and crisp from gaming to movies plus further social media usage. I'm always on social media is driving me mad. However, sitting back and watching a movie was enjoyable. Dark scenes were dark and light scenes were light. Content is rich and clear to view. I didn't have any bad experiences except for really bright sunlight. Sound levels are high, but I recommend using it around 50% for the best performance. And if like me, you're always using Bluetooth headphones, built into the display, you'll find a teardrop front facing camera with a 25 megapixel sensor and f2.2 aperture. So wide lens offering HDR and the ability to record full HD video at 30 frames per second. It offers a gyro EIS, which is an electronic image stabilization option. And I've got some images and videos to share for you while you're watching this. Before talking about the camera, let's share what you get on the rear. So it's a dual 48 megapixel rear camera offering wide and ultra wide options to choose from. Plus you get a TOF time of flight 3D sensor. Your wide lens is an f1.6 aperture with phase detection autofocus and OIS, which is optical image stabilization. So a little bit better than the EIS option. Moving to your ultra wide lens, it's an f2.2 aperture with phase detection autofocus yet again. Video recording jumps up to 4K at 30 frames per second with gyro EIS, so electronic image stabilization. The camera app is easy to use and simple navigation. However, I found when you're trying to jump between modes, say video, photo, ultra pixel shot, night shot, or a panoramic mode, I found it seemed to get stuck 
back and one point even when I was testing the phone I actually needed to restart my phone because the app just froze it locked me out which was highly frustrating so if you wanted to capture a special moment and you wasn't able to I don't know what happened I checked for software updates there was nothing there I was maybe just jumping through it too quickly so in the camera app settings you have a range of different options you can change and adjust to make it best for you. Now I think it's really important to always delve in there and see what's available. So just tagging on the end of the camera app settings there, I just want to mention the accessibility settings you get on this device. As a visually impaired person, I like to highlight the accessible settings and options you have on your smartphone. I was really pleased to see when I was going through the setup process of this device, they offered a wide range of settings that you're able to change and adjust to make it easier for you to set up your device. I have made a quick how-to guide how to set up your Fairphone 4. So make sure to go and check that video out either at the end of this video or by clicking here at the top right hand corner. Moving from my experience of the camera app, let's discuss what is running our device. We have a Qualcomm Snapdragon 750G 5G 8 nanometer chipset, a CPU which is optical processor with variants of speed, and your GPU is a Dranu 619. This device comes with Android 11, however, it is now running Android 12. I'm unsure if it will get pushed to Android 13, but I'll keep you updated. An extra benefit from Fairphone is that they offer a five year guarantee as long as you register by end of August this year so 2023 you'll get five years worth of guarantee on your smartphone which is really impressive and again this is another key selling point from Fairphone they want a phone that lasts they've made a phone that is upgradable so you can change and modify components they've added the ability to make sure that software updates are updated Android 12 is great to have Android 13 would be amazing to have it's a dual sim option so you have one physical sim which I used all the time and you can watch a video also here of how to insert a sim card and SD card because it's a little bit tricky and there is an option for an eSIM both are 5G connectivity as I've mentioned thanks to Vodafone I've been enjoying 5G in and around London and also my area now is starting to have 5G. So you do have a couple of options to choose from. So you can have six gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage, or like me, you've got eight gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage with an option to add a micro SD card. So your IP rating is 54. This is low because you can get into your components quite easily. My personal thoughts are that I've really enjoyed this phone and it's a phone that's maybe used for the elder generation, it's simple and easy to use, it may be a child's first phone to use. The overall experience has been really good, there's been a couple of little letdowns, one is the brightness in bright sunlight, however that may be my eyes because my eyes aren't fantastic in the bright sunlight either. The other is the camera app that froze on me and I had to restart my device. With those two options set aside however, I've been really impressed with the Fairphone 4 it can do everything I want, I can enjoy all of my content and the battery lasts all day. However, I want to know what you think. It's always great to hear from you. If you haven't yet already, please make sure to like and if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and leave a comment below of let me know what you think of the Fairphone 4. I'm also looking forward to seeing what the Fairphone 5 has to offer and what's coming new from Fairphone. I will make sure to leave a link in the video description to their website and if you have any questions just drop a comment below, it is great to hear from you. For me Ricky, thanks for watching and have a great day.